Hello. This is a short introduction to the redeveloped tech award in construction in the built environment. My name is Gabriel Staples. I'm the sector manager for construction for Pearson B Tech and Apprenticeships, and I've helped to develop the new tech awards. I'll update you briefly on each component that makes up the qualification and what changes have taken place in terms of content and assessment from the existing tech award. So in terms of an overview, the new tech award uh, in construction has a three component structure. Component one is 48 guided learning hours worth 40% of the qualification grade and is externally assessed by Pearson. Components two and three are each 36 guided learning hours and worth 30% of the qualification grade. They're assessed using the new Pearson set assignments marked internally by you, the teacher and assessor, and moderated by us, Pearson. The PSAs are released in January of each year and assessed in May and June from 2023, so you'll have plenty of flexibility within your program to prepare for, administer and mark the assessments. Each assessment in the qualification is marked out of 60 available marks. In terms of content updates, uh, Construction and the Built Environment is a new tech award for 2022 and it's developed out of our popular BTEC First suite of the same title. The qualification will therefore be uh, familiar, the content will be familiar, uh, if you've previously taught the current BTEC first. Through the development of this tech award, we've taken the opportunity to make some minor adjustments to content areas such as sustainability. We've also removed maths and science as a separate unit, instead embedding concepts throughout, which we will believe make it more engaging for learners and better encourage learning in context. The changes we've made have been done following feedback and through consultation with teachers and should increase clarity and ease of delivery over the current first award. Because we know that learners at 14 to 16 value a broad introduction to the sector and they may not yet know where they want to specialise after, we've kept both the design activities and practical hand skills for the most common craft trades in components two and three. We've streamlined the options to ensure consistent high quality application of assessment criteria for these most common of craft trades and learners can still choose between developing their practical skills in a bricklaying or in a carpentry context depending on their interests. Essential health and safety understanding and practice is included in component two to help learners start to appreciate the importance of health and safety and carrying out risk assessments. Designing and the ability to respond with solutions to a client brief remain a very important feature of the new tech award, with this component being designated the synoptic unit, drawing upon understanding of material properties and technologies available which are implicit in the other components too. Understanding the industry is now contained in component one, the external exam, as it is fundamental knowledge and understanding which can be best assessed by this method. Uh, calculations have been removed, but there's a greater emphasis on sketching techniques uh, from the construction drawing techniques, BTEC first unit, for example, and project timescales and environmental, e.g. flood and climate, they are also now included as considerations under the constraints on design heading. Budget constraints now include considerations such as the size of the building, floor area analysis and contingency allowances. We've designed this award to make it as easy as possible for you to transition from your current delivery of the first award with confidence, or if you're delivering tech awards for the first time, you'll find the content clear and easy to interpret. The units increase from 30 hours to 36 to reflect the change in the qualification structure, going down to three units. Under the new requirements, all assessments must be marked through numerical means using a mark scheme. In the new mark scheme, students can gain up to 12 marks across four bands, ranging through limited, adequate, good and comprehensive knowledge and understanding. A consistent set of descriptors to help you understand which band fits the quality of evidence overall, with three marks available in each band to give you more scope for differentiation. While the scenario or context may, may change every year, each PSA will assess the same skills so that the mark scheme remains consistent, making it easier for teachers and assessors to apply and standardise grading year on year. Components two and three are assessed through a non-exam internal assessment, uh, which have been designed to demonstrate application of the conceptual knowledge and underpinning the sector through realistic tasks and activities, and in so doing, uh, to deepen learning by connecting knowledge and practice. Due to the new technical requirements from the DfE, there are some changes to the assessment of these components that will be quite different to what teachers of the first award have been used to. Assignments used for summative test assessment must now be set by the awarding organisation. So the old authorised assessment briefs have been replaced by Pearson set assignments or PSAs. These will be released in January every year. Uh, component two will be assessed through a Pearson set assignment comprised of three tasks over eight supervised hours. Uh, learners will choose between a carpentry and bricklaying task, as I've mentioned. 
Uh, they'll follow a set brief for a specific wall construction or a timber frame product to stated dimensions. And in task one of this component, students are required to show their awareness of hazard and risk. Uh, they're required to produce a risk assessment and we include planning and time management and quality checking as part of their assessment. In task two, students will demonstrate practical planning and time management skills to respond to a brief. And in task three, students will show understanding of quality checking. This aims to reflect the wider skills and practices learners will be expected to display in the workplace. There is also a small amount of applied maths in the measuring and setting out activities, for example. Finally, component three is also assessed through the PSA. Uh, and this time it's comprised of two tasks to be completed over eight, eight hours. That's two hours for preparation and six for task completion. This component is actually designated to be synoptic in its assessment, so there's opportunity to apply knowledge and skills to respond to that brief from across the qualification. Centres will need to assess, therefore, towards the end of the qualification, but may choose to teach elements of the component alongside other, other units. This will depend on your timetabling and resourcing requirements. Students will be required to respond to a design brief using knowledge and understanding gained throughout the course to present to a client alongside sketches of their, of their design. In this unit, understanding the construction industry is no longer assessed here, as it was in the first, as it moves to component one. Uh, the number of sketch designs is no longer a criterion to determine grades. Instead, the emphasis is on quality and their ability to meet the brief and to mitigate the constraints. In terms of the ex externally assessed component one, the content for this unit has been largely taken from the first award unit one, construction technology, with which you'll be already be familiar. It's been updated and added to to reflect the increased unit size from 30 to 48 hours. Sustainability now has a whole subtopic devoted to it to reflect increased methods to achieve sustainability, e.g. alternative energies and a wider range of examples. A greater emphasis on modular construction and new inclusion of steel frame construction is included. And greater detail of content now provided for the pre-construction topic is also there. Uh, substru substructure groundworks now includes consideration of utility services. Uh, there's a new requirement to sketch detail and annotate different substructures. And the addition of the understanding the construction industry topic to this unit, which was previously covered in unit three, construction and design is a new feature. So for the externally assessed component, that's component one, uh, it's assessed by an external exam set and marked by Pearson and completed under supervised conditions. The assessment availability is January, February and May, June. The first assessment is January, February 2024. Although exams must be set, assessed towards the end of the course as per DFE requirements, centres will likely want to start teaching this underpinning knowledge from the start. However, as learners will put this knowledge into practice throughout the programme and apply their learning synoptically in the design component too, it's also likely that learners will not have to spend large amounts of time in revision before the actual exam itself. Uh, we've retained the essence of the BTEC first unit construction technology in this exam. The duration has been increased over the first from 75 to 90 minutes to reflect the increase in content and the guided learning hours. Uh, wider understanding of the industry is now covered in this unit. For example, different areas of technology and the real life application of these technologies in the UK and around the world. Uh, it covers the understanding of basic scientific principles of material properties, technologies and structural requirements, but no longer includes the requirement for associated calculations as previously required for both units one and two in the first. So to reiterate, the exam must be taken terminally at the end, uh, though this was typically the case with the BTEC first, as well as those entered into the June, uh, for those entered into the June window. So in terms of support, uh, well, first of all, we'd encourage you to look through the draft specification, the Pearson set assignments and the sample assessment material, which are all available on the Pearson website. And if you have any further questions or preparing to deliver and need further support, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us. Uh, you can contact the subject advisor, Evren, here uh, by emailing teachingconstruction at pearson.com. You can also attend one of the upcoming Getting Started events early next year, where we'll be covering the qualification and assessments in more depth and answering further questions. Uh, you can book by visiting the Training for Pearson page on the Pearson website. Thank you very much and I hope to see you in one of our upcoming live events.